booktube it's missy and today i'm going to be sharing with you guys my thoughts on one flew over the cuckoo's nest by ken kessie and i'm going to compare it to the movie that i watched on friday starring jack nicholson this book was written in 1962 and this was ken kessie's debut novel the movie was uh released in 1975 and um, the characters that are well known is of course Jack Nicholson there's also Danny DeVito Christopher Lloyd and a few other characters that I don't know their names for but they're great um, like character actors that you've seen before in other movies and so let's just get started the first thing I want to talk about is this beautiful cover I mean I know it's very simplistic but I just love the rainbow colors it's so bright and just fun and I got this for a dollar at the San Diego swap meet so what a score that is and also I love the fact that it's so I mean it's super duper floppy so it was way easy to read and flip through the pages and that's always a good thing this by the way the cover was made by Paul Bacon and published by Penguin uh, well at least this edition was and I just Oh, I just loved this book. Okay, so I gave this book four stars. It took me a month and a half to read, not because it was boring, but because when I first started this book, I started during the Atopicathon Readathon, which my topic was asylums back in June. But then I didn't get to finish it during the readathon, and then by July, I was participating in a bunch of readathons. So I would read maybe a chapter or two and then continue on. And um, so I never sat down and read big, big chunks. And speaking of um, chapters, let me just find one. So here's sort of like a chapter. There is no chapter headings or pages. It just, there's just like a, a small uh, paragraph or indent what what is it called space good lord so there's just a space and then you can tell that it's a new paragraph or a new chapter by the fact that this is bold um but there are no chapters in this book so i would just read until i would get to another bold section and then i knew i would stop or whatever all right, so let's talk about characters. The main character of this book is named Chief Bromden. He's a Native American, and he's been at the asylum or mental institute on this, in this hospital, however you want to say it, for um, years. I, I don't remember exactly how many years he was on or in this hospital, but it's a while. I mean, he's like one of the first people that was there uh, when the head nurse arrived and she is the villain of the book. Now, normally when you read a book, you have the main character, then you have side characters. But in this story, uh, Chief Bromden is the narrator. So of course he is the main character because he's witnessing everything that's going down on the ward. But I want to say McMurphy is the main character because None of the story actually takes place until McMurphy arrives. Now, McMurphy is a character in itself, um, meaning he isn't crazy. He's not supposed to be there, but he's been faking it at the jail that he's at um, just so he could leave and not do any work. Oh, let me switch to this side so you guys can see me better. Um, and so right now he is at the hospital being evaluated by the doctors to see if he does need to be there or if he should be going back to jail and punished for faking crazy. Um, so when we first start, Chief Bromden is in a dazed state. He is on lots of drugs and he also believes that the head nurse has tweaked all of the patients where she's like, fitted them in with like some kind of bugging system so she can check their vitals to see how doped up they are and if they need more doping she will then uh, push buttons in her wall behind you know like the nurses station and like a hallucinogenic vapor would start shooting out of the vents to make them more sedated. Uh, obviously this is false but it's so funny to read about this through the eyes of the main character. Now, 
because he is in a drug state, you don't know what's true or what's not. And for the first couple chapters, I want to say 100 pages. For like the first 100 pages, you're completely confused at what's going on. But then all of a sudden, McMurphy shows up. And McMurphy is an Irish boxing, gambling, smooth talker. He waltzes into the ward and tries to take over, take charge of the situation. He's the class clown. He needs attention and um, he riles up everybody to go against the system and break down the walls that uh, Miss Ratchet, which is the head nurse, has built on the establishment. Um, in the book, uh, Chief Bromden calls them the, what are they called? Mm, he calls the, the people something. I can't I say it on the back. It does. It, they're the combines. He says that they combine each other to make a bigger person. So the combine, which is the nurse, the doctors, uh, the black boys, which are the, her um, helpers on the ward, they're all part of the combine, and they're the ones that are keeping all of the patients um, dumb-witted and slow and sluggish, so that way they don't rebel against um, the rules of the hospital. So when we meet McMurphy, and he comes into the hospital, and he swags over to the poker table where everybody is sitting. He tries to like evaluate all the players there and he's seeing how everything is. And he gets the guys, you know, wanting to play his way, betting with cigarettes, betting like other things. He's got a tally going where he's winning all of the games. Um, also, I want to note really quick that there are two kinds of patients on the floor that they're all staying in. There is the acute, which are people that can function pretty much by themselves, and then there's the chronics that are usually hooked up to either catheters or in wheelchairs or are pretty much in a vegetable kind of state. Murphy is, you know, getting all of the acutes to be on his side. And he bets with one of the characters that um, he can get the nurse to get so upset at him that she'll release him and let him go. And so that's the first bet of the book. And then you just go through the craziness that ensues after McMurphy gets there. And it just talks about that throughout the book, how he keeps trying to get the nurse angry by all of his shenanigans. And it, it was just a fun read. Now let's compare it a little bit to the movie. The movie itself, um, I feel, was driven by the fact that Jack Nicholson was the star of the movie. And that's the reason why people went to see it. It wasn't very accurate to the book. Um, I was very sad at the fact that the movie did not use uh, the main character, which is Chief Bromden, enough. He was a side character in the movie, and, I mean, the whole book is his, you know, his um, what he sees happening throughout the ward. And the movie does not share that. It, it's all about McMurphy. Even though McMurphy is a main character, it's just about him, which makes me sad because I think I think um, the Native American was a really great character. Also, the fact that he uh, tricks the entire staff into thinking he's dumb and deaf, where then they, you know, talk freely in front of him and he gets all this knowledge of what's going on because they don't think he can hear, and then he gets to use it uh, later in the future of the book. Um, towards his advantage and what else oh there's also a scene in here where they go fishing and in the movie uh chief bromden isn't on the fishing boat which really made me sad because it was so fun to read about him going fishing for the first time um he hadn't been out of the out of the hospital for years and years and years and everybody's having a good time and in the movie it was such a short um really boring 
uh, scene. The whole movie to me, if I had to rate the movie, I would have given it two stars. It just wasn't up to par with the book itself. I just enjoyed the book a lot more. And if you have watched the movie and you were thinking about reading the book, I would definitely check the book out. Um, you know, nine out of ten times the book is always better than the movie, and in this case it definitely is. Uh, and I think that's it. I just really enjoyed the book. I hope you guys pick up this classic. It is a fun read, um, and I think you'll enjoy it. And that is it. I hope you guys have a, a wonderful week, and I will talk to you soon.